We're now going to delve into our first game in Unity. We're going to be creating something called Pong. For those of you young people, you may not know what that is, but it's a basic game where you have two paddles and a ball that goes between them, and you're attempting to knock it past the other player. So this is going to be a two-dimensional game. We're going to be using this particular tutorial, Unity 2D Pong game. This will take us most of the way through the Pong game, but we'll have to add a few things at the end when we get there. I will be using Unity 2018 1.7 F1. Keep in mind that as Unity changes over time, you may find different controls in different places. The tutorial will not look exactly like the things that are in this particular version of Unity. And so you're going to have to do your best for finding the things that you need in different places and just kind of using the defaults as they add more things to it. So to begin with, we're basically going to have a goal on one side, a goal on the other, uh, two different brackets, the ball in the middle, and eventually score. The other thing about Pong is that, depending on where the ball hits the paddle, it goes off at different angles, so that there's some strategy to it. Because otherwise, if it just constantly bounced around in the same pattern forever, you wouldn't have much of a game. I have downloaded Unity. We're going to be using C Sharp for the programming language, and Visual Studio for the, basically, word for coding. It's called a IDE. Interactive Development Environment. It basically allows you to autocorrect code and things like that. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to be creating a new project. I'm just going to place it in the Documents folder, the default place, and make sure that it's a 2D project. So I'll create a new project. So I'm putting it in my Documents folder. I'm going to call this Pong. This is a 2D game. I think I'm going to turn off analytics for this and then create a project. So your screen may start out differently than this. I'm going to put my hierarchy on this side, project this way, and my scene here, and then the inspector on this side. You can move all of these tabs around and alter the sizes of things to fit your preferences. Most of the stuff I'm going to be doing is using this inspector, kind of the project and hierarchy here, and then the scene here. The general way that you will find things is you will be looking in this project, which is kind of like a folder structure. It's not purely just the one that you would use using the file explorer, but it has some extra metadata hidden behind it. Generally speaking, if you want to move things around, use the project thing in Unity, because it may be doing extra coding behind the scenes. This is kind of your objects that are in your scene. And then when you have a particular object, so if I select this camera, it shows me all the information about this particular object. Now, if I want to go see where this is actually located, that was that folder I set up earlier. In my case, it's under my account, in my documents, and in the Unity projects. So Pong is right here. And if I want to go look in there, actually, I can do that too. So here's where all of my project settings are, any libraries or packages I'm going to use, uh, assets is where you put your pictures, sprites, sounds, models, all that kind of stuff, and your code as well. All right, so one of the things they want you to do to begin with in this tutorial is to kind of explore the scene. So if you look at this scene here, I'm using the mouse wheel right now to zoom in and out. If I hold down the middle mouse wheel, I can actually pan. I move the whole scene around. And you can also use this movement tool here to move as well. So you can move like the camera, for example. If I have the move tool, I can move it using these vectors. This uh, tool you can just directly click as well. You can rotate and scale using these. So if I want to rotate this, you can grab the circle and rotate what it is. I'm going to undo that, Control-Z. Or you can scale things using these tools. Now, when we're actually playing the game, you hit this little play button here. And it goes slightly grayish. Now, something to keep in mind that is uh, many people have problems with in Unity is that when you are playing the game like this, if I go in and edit a bunch of these settings, 
So I say that the position is now 100. And it's way up to the right. Notice that when I stop playing the game, it resets everything. So when you are in the play mode, you can change things, but it will all be removed as soon as you stop playing it. So because of this problem, that gray is kind of easy to miss. I'm actually going to go under Edit, Preferences, and down here under Colors. And I'm going to change this play mode tint to something a little more obvious. So you do red or light green or something like that, but something more clearly that you are in the play mode. So now, when I go back, clearly I'm in play mode version. And if I edit anything here, then I'm going to be clearly know that that's what's going on. OK, so the way that Unity works is that everything you see is done through a camera. When we're looking at this particular camera, the camera sees this particular space in the scene itself. When we play the game, that's where it's going to look at. This game here shows which part I'm going to be looking at. When I hit play, that's the scene that's going to be shown. There's kind of a preview here. Everything is going to be done within this XY plane. And so everything that I want to see with a camera has to be placed in this area. So next we need to take a look at this camera in the hierarchy. So we're going to click on the main camera in the hierarchy and then go look at the inspector. So if we click camera over here, this is the, the inspector over here. Now we want to change a few of these settings. Notice that Z negative 10, that means that the camera is basically sitting 10 pixels towards your face out of the screen, looking down on the scene. And then it has these other positions for the X, Y, A scale, all that. And one of the things we want to do is uh, do a skybox and change the background color to black. Although we want to make sure that we set the opacity to be 255. Generally speaking, in color theory, we're going to be using red, green, and blue for our colors, which are a number between 0 and 255. So black is all zeros. Alpha is this last value here, and this is how transparent it is. So over here is totally clear, and you can see right through it like it's invisible. This is totally opaque, and you can't see through it at all, and it's got a range. The other thing we need to do is change the size here. If you look at the tutorial, they highlight here that the size needs to be changed to 40 as well. The rest of this we don't need to worry about too much. It has to do with uh, clipping planes, how deep the camera show goes in three-dimensional space, but we don't need to worry about that too much. So let's try actually adding something to our game. So now we need to actually create the walls, the left and right, top and bottom walls. I'm going to be using the ones from this tutorial, so I'm actually going to download these two PNGs, these two image files, and save them into the assets folder. So I'm going to take this one, save link as, I have to go find my folder. So it was in Documents, Unity Projects, Pong, Assets. And I'm going to have a few different sprites in here. So I'm going to create a new folder in here while I'm at it. And call this Sprites. And save this here. I'm also going to do the same thing with the vertical. In the example, they're just putting in the default assets area, but I like to have things a little more organized than that. So now if we look over here in the project, you'll see both the scene and the two sprites. There's a few settings we're going to have to do. We're going to have to take this particular sprite and make sure that it is labeled as a sprite when it's imported in. And we're going to use one pixel per unit. So this decides what the unit size of our game world is. You can think of that as an abstract one meter or one pixel or whatever, one centimeter, one size of whatever it is. And so this is saying how many pixels there are per unit of that kind of thing in your game. We're going to try and be consistent about this in this particular game to have just one pixel per unit. So 
So if I select this particular wall horizontal, it's already here as a sprite 2D in UI. I'm going to make this one pixel per unit. The sprite mode is single, the pivot is the center, the filter mode is point. Notice there's a whole lot more stuff here because of the newer version of Unity. So this, filter, this is going to be filter mode point, pivot center. All right, then we need to apply that. The same is true for the vertical one. One point. 